a busy NASCAR garage. It is live here on NASCAR.com. It's Garage Cam presented by Mobile One. The day after the duels, a big day. Everybody changing engines and everybody here talking about some amazing stories, including one of this young man, Landon Castle. LC, you've been in the Daytona 500 before, but this time getting into the Daytona 500, very different. Yeah, I mean, it's this is huge for me um, and this team. Uh, I've, I've had one Daytona 500 start, but um, but it was uh, it was earned by somebody else's points, and I just got hired, and, by, and, and I drove the car. But this time, you know, th this is my team that I worked with last year, and, and we all earned our way in. Um, you know, this, this, this is just amazing. Uh, we're, we're really excited. I mean, because this is a great American race for the fans at home. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are on this in this garage. Yeah. This race means so much. Yeah, it, it, it does. It, it really sets the tone for the season. The prize money in this race is huge. I mean, it, it really pays our bills for the next four or five weeks. Um, the, the points that we'll make in this race are what set the tone for the season. So, you know, that's where we're special compared to uh, to other sports. You know, we uh, our, our big event is at the beginning of the season, and then we have our championship and our playoff at the end. And you had to get through a lot, not just on the racetrack, but you've had a kind of a kind of a rough week. Why don't you tell the fans why you look like a prize fighter? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm actually recovering really well. But um, uh, last Saturday before Daytona 500 time trials, I was riding my bicycle in Daytona and got hit by a car. So um, it was. I'm really lucky to to not have any further injuries. I have got some pretty good road rash and that I'm healing from and, and bruised inside my knees. But uh, I just. I went for a run this morning. I ran six miles to the racetrack, and I feel really good. So I'm, I'm healing, healing pretty quickly. Well, Landon, congratulations on making the Daytona 500. Thank a you. A great story. Had to overcome so much this week, uh, getting hit on his bicycle by a car, and then coming here with his underdog team, the number 40 team, and making the great American race. So many great stories here this weekend, including this guy, the number 98 car, Josh Wise, will line up 11th. How about that for an underdog story? Josh Wise had to race his way into the Great American Race last night. He didn't just back into it. He ran up front all night long and put himself in the biggest race of the season. First in the interactive chat room, Louis DiDonato. Welcome to Garage Cam, presented by Mobile One. Want to welcome our new sponsor, Mobile One, to the fray. Great to have them on board with Garage Cam, our live interactive tour of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Garage. And we have a nationwide show and sometimes a truck show. Folks, if you're new to Garage Cam, you see Bobby Labonte's car right here. Off to the right, if you're watching this live, you see a chat room. Hop in that chat room, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you want to see here on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. I'm Matthew Dillner, I'm your host every week, and we have a lot of fun giving you a all access tour. It's kind of like if you had a pit pass, so to the garage area. And right now, a lot of action going on in the garage. And we look at Trevor Baines, number 21, another driver. Yes, he's had success. He's won the Daytona 500, but this team, Trevor Bain, had to race his way into the show last night in the Budweiser Daytona duels, the qualifying races for the Daytona 500. And young Trevor Bain did just that last night, putting this legendary number 21 into the great American race. That's right, buddy. Bobby Labonte also in this H. Scott Motorsports team, the number 52, making the Great American Race. So many great stories here this week, including this car, Cole Witt. Terry Labonte getting in. And right here, the number 33 of Brian Scott pulling double duty. Some say he can, he can win this Daytona 500. If you look at how this car drafted last night, and how Brian Scott performed last night. Unbelievable race for Brian Scott. This car right here, the white tail, number 33, could dart in and out. Any lane on the racetrack, it seemed like this car drafted real well. The body guys here at RCR, of course, doing one heck of a job. All their cars seemingly drafting really well, and this 33 could be a big underdog for the Daytona 500. Cole Witt, speaking of underdogs, making the show last night. Of course, he wrecked the other day in practice. Great story because they were rolling out a backup car. And then his teammate, Parker Kligerman, flipped on the front stretch. They started rolling out Kligerman's backup car. They said, hold on a second. They said, hold on a second. 
Maybe we can fix Cole Witt's car, and maybe it'll be good enough in the duels to make the Daytona 500, and we'll give the better backup car to Parker Kligerman. It worked out. What a great story for Swan Racing. It's noisy here in the garage area, of course. Here's another great story. Kurt Busch, first time with his team, making the Daytona 500. And we see our first driver walking in here. It's Michael Annette. Michael Annette live on Garage Cam, and uh, congratulations, you're in the Great American Race. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I pretty much got in on my guys' hard work to uh, get us, uh, you know, that 18th place qualifying spot uh, on last Sunday. So I uh, definitely learned some lessons last night on, on uh, what not to do and keeping my car in the draft. So uh, just glad to get that one. You know, I think I was more nervous for uh, last night than anything and, and uh, just ready. Glad to have that night over with you ready for the 500 now. Unlike any other race, there's so much nerves, like you said, that go into just making this race because there's so many layers with qualifying. Yeah, definitely. And as a, as a rookie and go for rookie year, I mean, it just sets the tone for the whole season. So to, to miss the first one, you're just behind the whole rest of the year. So uh, like I said, it was it was all the hard work of my guys uh, throughout the offseason. And, and uh, Tommy Baldwin and Bono giving me a car on Sunday that you know qualified as well as it did. It pretty much had us locked in before, uh, before that race even started last night. It was going to take a lot of things to go wrong for us not to get in, and everything worked out good. So like I said, just glad to have last night behind us and get 2014 started now. Real quick, I know you're a big hockey fan. Big game on today, USA versus Canada. Semifinals, what do, what do you think? Uh, obviously, you got pulled for the U.S. Uh, yesterday was a heartbreaker with the women losing, but uh, actually right before I left here, uh, I was on the DVR in the motorhome sent it to record. So now I just I can't check Twitter. I can't check anything till uh, till I get back to my coach and watch that whole uh, watch that whole game because I know all my uh, hockey buddies are gonna be keep uh, updating everybody. Uh, hey, actually, don't, don't look at your phone. Yeah, actually, actually uh, on uh, Facebook, my the last team I played for the Waterloo Blackhawks. Um, Joe Pavelski was our oh, yeah. captain, yep. and uh, he's on the U.S. team, and and uh, our buddy uh, Matt Fornatero, who's playing overseas now, is from Canada. So there's been a lot of jabbering going back and forth. So I know if I get on there, there's gonna, I'm going to have an update about every 10 minutes. So my phone's going to go off for uh, for about the next four hours. All right, Mike Lynette, congratulations making the Daytona 500. What a great story that is. We we're talking about stories there. Kurt Busch in the number 41, the first race with that team making it into the Daytona 500. Reed Sorensen, the other Tommy Baldwin racing car, the teammate to Michael Lynette in this number 36 Golden Corral Chevrolet making the Daytona 500. This is one of those races when you just qualify to make it into this race. It's a story in itself. Speaking of stories, this team BK Racing, the number 23, Alex Bowman. You saw him a lot with some great success in the Robbie Benton-owned car in the uh, Nationwide Series last year. Young Alex Bowman racing his way into the Daytona 500 yesterday in the duels. One of the other big stories. A guy that wasn't sure if he was going to make it in. Talked to him on the qualifying grid the other day. Wasn't sure if he had enough speed to make it into the show. Parker Kligerman, the number 30 car. There's a kid that was on his roof earlier this week. Hey, there he is. Speaking of, par par <laughs> Speaking of Parker Kligerman, you see him on the hood there. Is that you? That's Lenny. That's Lenny? That's, well, it's me in a, a former life, I guess, or a, for, or a future life. So that's my next, that's my backup career right there. <laughs> we'll but, talk uh, about this because the Daytona 500 for a rookie is always amazing. It's always yeah. special, especially when you make it into your first one but the road that you guys had to take personally for yourself as a driver and as a team over the last few days has been an amazing story. Yeah, it's been a, a, a major journey, you know, ups and downs all throughout, uh, from obviously, literally ups and downs, from <laughs> qualifying well and having a fast race car to getting in the, uh, the duel or the practice for the duels and being literally upside down, sliding across the front stretch to my guys working amazingly hard. I mean, just incredibly, a incredible amount of work that they had to do to get these cars ready to go out there and be ninth on the white flag of the duel, find that we're getting in, my teammate's going to get in and we run out of fuel, uh, to then having to watch the second duel to see if we get in. I mean, it's just been up and down roller coaster, but 
we uh, we know we have a fast lending tree trader Camry. We showed that in the duel. Uh, we're in the Tejon 500. We are proud to have Lending Tree, such a massive company, an incredible company on board. For Swan Racing and Speed Stick on Cole's car, we've been brought, brought in two amazing sponsors to support and uh, with SMS Audio. And so we're going to work on this thing. We're going to do a lot of things to get it ready for a 500 mile race. Hopefully get a little practice in and then we're going to be we're going to be ready for the 500 and be done. Hey, sometimes they say the best thing is to battle through adversity yes. and you guys have done that. I, uh, I said that after we flipped over a little adversity only makes you stronger. And uh, that's what we hope will happen to us. And it has made us stronger. It's made us a better team throughout. And uh, we look forward to uh, showing that in the 500 and the rest of the season. Well, uh, we got some fans on here. Angler okay. 15 that says, and Louise from UK, from the United Kingdom, that is pulling for you. And they all like your story. Come Awesome. Parkland. Thank you very much, Louise. I appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys in the UK uh, don't stay up too late watching our race forever and don't get in trouble. But uh, I appreciate that, that, that uh, over-the-sea support. That's amazing to know that there's uh, people out there that care not only about NASCAR but about myself. So that's very humbling. Thank you. All right, Parker Kligerman, have a great day, and he is having a great day because he is in the great American race, and what they've had to overcome to get there is quite an amazing thing. So many great stories. You see the trailer over there, the number 51 team. Justin Algar, you want to talk about pins and needles. Last night, after the race, he wasn't sure if he had made the Daytona 500. And it was about 10, 15 minutes afterwards that they found out that they did. And man, what a sigh of relief. And here is Ryan Newman walking to his car. See if we can walk and talk with Ryan here for a second. What's up, Ryan Newman? New team, new look this year. And I'll tell you what, you've got a rocket ship. Yeah, we, um, we haven't proven it. Uh, when it comes to the checkered flag yet, hopefully we can do that with the Daytona 500. But the uh, car's definitely been fast. These CR engines are strong. We'll uh, shake her down here in practice, see how it's like. All right, Ryan Newman right there with a rocket ship. And hey, we were talking about Justin Allgaier before. Last night, of course, the twins. The twins. The twins are the duels. The duels, yes. And a little bit of uh, kind of like a nervousness after the race if you had made the Daytona 500 but you're in the great American race. We are in the great American race. It's, uh, that's, that's the great thing. We, uh, we had an interesting duel last night. We got shuffled out uh, early and got kind of separated from the pack. And I thought, okay, we'll be fine. And unfortunately they ran both duels with no cautions yeah. and uh, it didn't work out so well for us. But we, uh, you know, it was, it was nerve wracking at the end, but we made it and that's all that matters. And, I'll tell you, uh, I can't be prouder of everybody at HCAP Motorsports to see the direction they, they went this winter and to get two cars in the field, um, you know, have Bobby in the race as well as myself. And I've got a super fast brand Chevy. I just got to stay in the pack and not be stupid. And uh, if we can do that, I'll, we'll be in good shape. You know, when you're growing up around IndyCar racing, you watch the Indy 500. Right. When you're growing up around NASCAR and stock car racing, you watch the Daytona 500. Watching this race as a kid growing up, like I've watched it, I know you have. Oh, yeah. You know, did you ever think you'd be at a Daytona 500? Now, remember, you're going to be able to look back at this 20 years from now, and you're in the Daytona 500. I told my dad when I was five years old when I started racing that if I could just make it to the Daytona 500, I'd be happy. And here we are. So I've, I I guess now i got to set a new goal. I don't know. Uh, Win the Daytona 500. Sure, we'll go with that one. That sounds like <laughs> a great plan. So hopefully, hopefully uh, you know, we get in the race on Sunday and, and just uh, have a good, calm race and, and, you know, run our way up to the front. And, It'd be okay if we stay there. I, I don't need to win it yet, but uh, we, we never know. We won't take up all the good luck on the first one, but uh, <laughs> no, it, it definitely cool to be in. All right, Justin Algar, congratulations on making the Daytona 500 a big thing for this young driver. And here is the number 34 car that was the big underdog last year. David Reagan getting that win at Talladega. A big win for David Reagan in this team. And there is David Reagan. What's up, David Reagan? What's up, uh, NASCAR World? Yeah, NASCAR.com garage cam. And uh, I'll tell you what, last year, the restrictor plate race, Talladega, one of the, the feel-good Cinderella moments of the year for this team, for you personally. Daytona 500 is another race where you guys should be strong. Yeah, we were just talking about we've had great luck at Talladega. I think four top ten finishes in a row, never put a scratch on a car. But at Daytona, we've had terrible luck. We, we've wrecked a couple of Daytona 500s and obviously a backup car for us after that uh, duel uh, last night. So 
we had a fast car. We were able to run in the top five and the top ten a little bit. And, How's this piece, um, though? It's going to be good. It's just actually the car we raced in uh, Daytona uh, in 2012, and it was our backup last year. So, uh, you know, it's a solid car. The, the Front Row Motorsports team did a great job preparing it. We've got a, an engine in it. You know, everything's good to go. We'll be able to run some this practice. So, uh, you know, we, we feel good about it. I'm just glad it happened on Thursday, yeah. you know, instead of Saturday. So yeah, uh, we can uh, get some of this out of our out of our system and uh, get ready for the Daytona 500. All right, thanks for joining yeah. us, David Reagan. We appreciate it. And hey, this GoDaddy team, there's Jake and Ari, and we're gonna have a new segment on our show called the Mobile One Tech Question of the Week. And Jake and Ari, uh, wanted to ask you our tech question. Lenny Crone from St. Paul, Minnesota, wanted to know about oil changes on, on a race car. Uh, how many times on a typical weekend do you change the oil, and how different is it from changing oil on your street car? Yeah, yeah typ typically on a normal weekend on Friday, we come to uh, the racetrack with regular race oil in our car that we're going to race at. Uh, we do our hour and a half practice, and after hour and a half practice, we'll change our oils for qualify, which are lighter oil. Uh, Mobile One's good one, our, our sponsors, and the real good oil. Uh, so we put that in there for qualifying, run two laps on them, whatever we have to do. It's a real light oil that will get through for a couple laps. And then we'll put all our uh, race oils back in there, a little heavier, a little more dependable and stuff like that for the race weekend. So on a normal weekend, we'll come to the racetrack with one oil, switch over for qualifying, and then put our race oils back in. So about two changes a weekend compared to your 3,000 miles that you change on your regular standard car. Um, and that's what we do on our race cars each week. Easier or harder to change oil on this thing than street Easier, because I don't change oil on my own car, so it's not <laughs> easier to do it here. <laughs> Jake and Harry, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. The Mobile One Tech Question of the Week here, presented by Mobile One. And this is your GoDaddy number 10 car, Danica Patrick, in the Daytona 500, her second Daytona 500. Hey, the flagman has just indicated that it's halfway, halfway in garage cam. We got some ground to cover, guys. This is a big garage here at Daytona and a lot of cars, well, a little less cars than we saw the other day when we were in here because some cars sent home. There's the 38 of David Gillen about to be backed into this garage stall, so we'll get out of the way here real quick, but this is Casey Mears Geico Chevrolet. Yes, Chevrolet, a switch to Chevrolet for this team. And I'll tell you what, talking to everybody in the organization, so happy with the support that they've gotten from everybody at Chevrolet to make this program turn around and the number 13 car should be pretty slick led by booty barker right here speaking of cars that are pretty slick the number 11's undefeated so far during speed weeks yes undefeated won all three segments of the sprint unlimited and last night his duel won that duel a dominating performance so far during speed weeks for the fedex toyota of denny hamlin Let's go back out into the sunshine. We're expecting some weather to come in here later today. You can see those clouds, and it's very hot. It's very humid here. But I'll tell you what, weather's not coming for a little bit. So hopefully we can skirt it. Some exciting qualifying for the camp Camping World Truck Series today and for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And this driver right here will be pulling double duty. You see the two on the back of his hat. That's because he's running the Nationwide Series race in the number two car, but also the Cup Series race Brian Scott here making the Daytona 500 last night. And there's a car right there that finished in spectacular fashion last night in the duels. That's the backup car for Clint Boyer. He flipped his primary car coming to the checkers last night in the duels. Well, here's Brian Scott. Let's see if we could grab a word with uh, Brian Scott real quick here. What's up, Brian Scott? What are you doing? Oh, good. Is this a UK hat? <laughs> hey, up. UK fish He's from the UK, day. and this is his You're 103rd, from the UK? 103rd yeah. NASCAR race. Oh, that is awesome. Well, yeah. that's awesome. We appreciate the support. Okay, yeah. oh, okay. And talking to a guy right here that what are you wearing? is making his first <laughs> Daytona. Did you get dressed in the dark? What do you got going Come on Come on, you don't like my hat? I wear these hats all the time. Okay, let's you go outside. You mirrors? Here. No, just kidding. Dude, you just qualified last night for the Great American Race at Daytona 500. How pumped are you? Oh, I'm really excited. It, it was nerve wracking. Uh, I've always kind of prided myself on not getting anxious and uh, having nerves of steel, but- You were a little anxious, admitted. When you're going to qualify for the Daytona 500, it, it gets to you a little bit. Um, so it was nice to make it through that and have a good starting spot for the Daytona 500. Not just that, but if you looked at the way your car handled last night, I was watching it in particular, how it handled in the draft, that 33 is a rocket. 
The 33 is good. I hope other people realize that, and we're going to have some drafting to help when it comes to uh, to Sunday the, the race. I hope people will work with us, uh, and I hope to make it to the end of those things. You know, you always are, are afraid of the big one. I, I hope we can make it through that. Well, to finish first, you must first finish. That's Brian right. Scott wants to do that here, and he's going to finish talking to this fan from the UK. Hey, don't get hit by Landon Castle's car, okay? <laughs> Oh, Brian Scott, always fun, always entertaining on Garage Cam. He was on the show briefly yesterday on the Nationwide uh, show and wasn't his, his usual jovial self. And I think that has to do a little bit with pressure. Running two races, and just like he said, it's nerve-wracking to make it as a rookie into the Daytona 500, and he did so. A lot of weight lifted off of Brian Scott's shoulders. Looking at our interactive chat room right now, Jason, I want to see something I haven't seen this week. The 48 car without a dent. Ouch! Ooh, that was a rough comment right there, but it has been true. Uh, the 48 car going on car number three for the weekend. A very tough weekend for Jimmy Johnson, but 48 fans, he's been fast, and that's the number one thing. I think I see Clint Boyer. Maybe we can see if Clint Boyer is available to talk, and we'll show you that 48 car real quick in the garage area, car number three for the weekend. The Lowe's bunch, the Cobalt Tools bunch, brought a new car down here just yesterday, I believe. Trailer to car here from Concord, North Carolina, from Hendrick Motorsports Stables. And hey, check it out. It's Clint Boyer and Casey Kane talking here in the garage. The driver of the Farmers Insurance number five and Clint Boyer here in the gray t-shirt. Clint Boyer, Garage Cam, live. How you doing, buddy? Tough night last night. It's kind of like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, you doing a little bit better today, Clint Boyer? I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got to love Clint Boyer. Always entertaining. <laughs> Casey Kane fan for forever. Casey Kane, Carl Edwards, please. Well, we just got to see Casey Kane. He just, uh, let me see, let me see. I'm looking, I'm looking. And I think he might have just ducked into his uh, trailer. Let's show you some other cars real quick. Matt Kenseth, winner of the duel last night. And then the car that will sit on the pole for the Great American Race ran real strong last night in the duel and kind of dropped back at the end. Austin Dillon back in the three. DHKB 1118. Kyle Bush and Matt Kenseth, please. Well, here is Kyle Bush's number 18 Peanuts ride. Getting the helmet on already. About to hit the track for practice. Some team's going to run some limited laps here today. Kyle Bush, one of the teams ready here at the beginning of practice. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s National Guard number 88. Check out the Gold Leaf numbers. If you're a fan of like dirt track old school numbers, you got to love the Gold Leaf here. The look on this car. Man, we got a lot of ground to cover. We've talked to so many drivers today that we might not be able to show you every car. Well, folks, we're going to try our darndest. <laughs> Here's the number 24 car, the Drive to End Hunger machine for all of you big Jeff Gordon fans. Here's Jeff Gordon's number 24 car, a close-up look at it here inside the garage here on Garage Cam, presented by Mobile One. Here's the number 22 car, Joey Logano. The Penske Ford. The number 16 of Greg Biffle. A car that a lot of people are saying has a good shot down here during speed weeks quietly could be one of the uh, main contenders here for the Great American Race on Sunday. Tigra from Leesburg, North Carolina. You need your fix. And what you need your fix of is this number four car of Kevin Harvick. Disqualified last night after the duel. Kind of a big story, this number four team. But I'll tell you what, the team was a little disappointed. But they have a fast Budweiser number four. Still, look out for this new Stuart Haas racing team. Another car with a little bit of disappointment last night. You want to talk about disappointment. Here's a car that qualified on the outside of the front row. 
Martin Truex Jr. Quiet, quiet, quiet until we came down here and he made noise on the clock. And then last night, a great run in the duels ends up in a ball of flames and a wrecked race car. The backup car now out for the Denver Mattress number 78. And they got to see if they got the same speed, the same speed they had in their primary car here today. A big practice session today and tomorrow for Martin Truex Jr. And here is that Farmers number five car of Casey Kane. Five minutes to go on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. Five minutes to go. And there's PR extraordinaire Christine Curley live on Garage Cam. <laughs> As she says, please no. Camera shy, come on. Here's the number 99 car of Carl Edwards. And the number one of Brad Keselowski. The white old school Miller Lite look on board the paint scheme. You gotta love those cans too. It's pretty cool to see the old school cans. Splish lever, let's see white lightning. I think that's the car you must be talking about because that's the most white car out here is the Miller Lite car. Jamie McMurray, this number one machine, a backup car for Jamie McMurray. A Little bit of heartbreak last night, of course, in the closing laps there of the duel for this number one team. I'll tell you what, they had a piece. Hoping to see if they get speed out of this machine today. A lot of fingernail biting today for some teams in practice. Others just kind of lollygagging because they know what they have and they might need to just shake down a few things and try some different adjustments, race adjustments, fuel runs. Ryan Vickers, of course, going to a backup car after a wreck the other day, the number 55. Paul Menard in this number 27 machine. Tony Stewart, back in the saddle, the number 14, Mobile One Chevrolet. Great to see Tony Stewart back at the track here after, of course, his suffering an injury last year in a sprint car race. Tony Stewart, a darn racer, though. Saw him so many times over the offseason and all the progression that took place as far as, you know, the different surgeries, but then also getting into the chair and then getting out of the chair and the cane and the walker, working really hard to get back behind the wheel. A lot of people don't realize what he's been through. It's not just a, a typical injury. And Tony Stewart worked hard to get back in the behind the wheel of this number 14 Bass Pro Shops Mobile 114. And there's Eric Gamarola's car, the number 43, the King's Ride. And check it, check it out. The Nationwide Insurance Zest Machine. Ricky Stenhouse, let's get you a better look at this Ford Fusion as he climbs in behind the wheel of that machine. <laughs> Gives a thumbs up to you guys, the fans. And there is Ricky Stenhouse getting ready for practice here today. What's the game plan, brother? Well, I don't know if you saw the uh, duels last night. I get to uh, practice coming on to pit road like 10 times in a row. <laughs> Mike's cracking the whip, so. Hey, you, go. you know, it's good to see you guys back together, but uh, of course there's tough love sometimes. It is tough love, but <laughs> hey. I give it back to him at some point, so it's, uh, it's all good. All right, Ricky Stenhouse, have a great practice out here in the number 17 car. We talked to this driver, Ryan Newman, shortly. Walking and talking, the cat driver this year for Richard Childish Racing. We pass over Kyle Larson's machine. His car is not in the garage area right now, but Marcos Ambrose is, is Marcos Ambrose in the Daytona 500. This team has been running good all weekend. Blue, Drew uh, Blickensturfer and this crew working very hard. The boys on the DeWalt 9 having a great speed week so far. And there is the pit box of young rookie Kyle Larson. His car already out there. Some cars rolling a little early right now out onto the track. And you see these dark clouds moving in very, very fast. Should be some weather later on today. It should not disrupt this practice session, though. So if you guys are going to tune in and watch it on TV shortly here, Follow along on NASCAR.com, of course, to see who is where as far as the speed charts are concerned. Here is the number 99 car of Carl Edwards.
the Fastenal forward. Making some daring moves last night in the draft was Carl Edwards. See if we could get in there with Carl. Here is Carl Edwards here. What's up, buddy? So, uh, is this live on Garage Cam? Live on Garage Cam, man. Evan, Evan Lyle. Hey, guys. Came What's up, man? Michigan. All right. We, um, the guys put the fender back on our car. They say it's going to be good, so we're going to go get a little bit of practice in. Everybody's fired up. Got a lot of faith in these guys, and I'll tell you what, last night, you were trying a lot of different things. I saw you out there making a lot of different moves out there. How much did you learn? Well, what happened was I, I should have just stayed in line. <laughs> and I, and, but you know, in these short races, it, there's a lot on the line. I thought, let's go for it. And yeah. it didn't work out on the bottom. But I learned a bunch. And, you know, the 500 miler, I've had Robbie Reiser told me, he said, we took the lane changing fender off of it. This is the stay in line <laughs> fender. So I'll be, probably be a little more tame in the 500. But if the car is good. I think we can win this thing. Well, it's the end of Garage Cam. Why, does, why, does it, why don't we have Carl Edwards close us off here? All right, so this is Carl Edwards from Daytona, where you should be. I mean, wherever you are now, there's no place better than this. Thanks for watching Garage Cam. We'll see you on the flip side. All right, Carl Edwards and everybody here at NASCAR.com, thanks for joining us on Garage Cam. I'm your host, Matthew Dillner, and until next time, we'll see you at the races.